Tourism is embedded in our history, our community, and our culture. Landmarks offer clues as to how Traverse City, Michigan grew to be a year-round destination for visitors. Our story begins with the lumbering era and Traverse City's founding father, Harry Hanna. In 1851, barely a dozen settlers had made La Grande Traverse, as travel was primarily by water. Drawn to the vast pine forests that covered this land, Hannah and his Chicago partners purchased a mill and 200 acres, what is now downtown Traverse City. Over 35 years, Hannah Lane Company produced 1 billion board feet of lumber. In fact, after the Great Chicago Fire, much of the wood used to rebuild came from the Hannah Lane Company. Hannah oversaw operations from a small cottage near the mill until convinced by his wife to build a retirement home that suited his community stature. His 1893 Queen Anne Mansion on 6th Street was a showpiece then as it is now, with over 40 rooms built from native hardwoods. Hannah recognized that Pine would soon run out and had the foresight to seek a future for his growing village. By donating land and attracting the Northern Michigan Asylum, he secured year-round jobs and state funding and preserved 300 acres of woodlands in the heart of Traverse City. One of the largest historic renovation sites in the nation today, the village is an example of his vision for our town. Tourists first arrived by steamships, which ferried lumber and supplies from Chicago to Traverse City. Recognizing the importance of the railroad, Hannah donated half the funds necessary to bring rail service to town. Generous with talent and money, he became Traverse City's first mayor and donated land for all churches and public agencies. His mercantile was the cornerstone of downtown commerce, a site still visible today. Northern Michigan attracted visitors who flocked to the countryside for fresh air, swimming, and relaxation. In-town lodging was still for the affluent. It was the Henry Ford models that made recreational travel affordable. Henry Ford enjoyed the area so much he bought an island in the bay, where he camped with Thomas Edison and Harvey Firestone. But travel by road wasn't easy, until local leaders helped establish the West Michigan Pike, which followed the lakeshore all the way from Chicago and became the northernmost section of the Dixie Highway. Motorists were a new kind of traveler, preferring roadside camping, cabins, and motor lodges which sprang up along the pike. Tourist guides helped motorists find gas stations and points of interest along the route. While downtown Traverse City was growing, renovations began on one of our most historic landmarks. The Park Place Hotel reopened in 1930 as a nine-story beacon of hospitality. Did you know it's actually a lighthouse, which is still used for navigation and as a symbol of welcome to all travelers? Reminders of our historic beginnings can be found throughout our community and along the scenic highways that have drawn visitors to Traverse City for generations. To learn more about the history of our community, contact Traverse City Tourism Visitor Center.